There we go. Hey everybody, it's your boy Serge Dragon, and welcome back to another edition of the Heaven's Monsters Podcast. With me always is Terrence, aka Tay Money. If you smell what the lion is cooking. There we go. Let's hit it off. We got the Raw and SmackDown review on August 5th and 6th of 2019. So let's kick it off with an it, what was the match? I, I was researching this before we started, and I've completely forgot to look at the first match. Yeah, I don't think there was anything mentioned. If there was, leave it in the comments down below. But the first match of the night would be a tag team women's match between Challengers and... Well, actually, hold up. Hold up. Uh, uh, yeah, it, was, yeah uh, it would be... Uh, the women's tag team match. Yeah, but it isn't Raw and SmackDown's Cha- uh, champion, it would be the challenge. Oh, what? Ah, this is weird. Yeah, because they made it sound like Charlotte Flair had the title. She didn't have nothing. Well, there's there. What? They, they, yeah, well, Kristen did mess up on the script. Yeah, they sure did. They got me going. So it would be Charlotte Flair teaming up with Becky Lynch, Raw Women's Champion, against Natalia, and I know this guy. Well, uh, probably fainted in his house when he was watching it and found out that his favorite Stratus faction, Trish Stratus, made an appearance on Monday Night Raw before SummerSlam. My childhood cr- uh, WWE crush. <laughs> to all you Stratus factions, heirs, I don't know, what you call No, 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 no. she calls it Stratus Furians. Stratus Furians, lay it in the comments down below with hashtag Stratus faction, heart, heart, heart. Take your pick on the colors of hearts. You want to go red, yellow, green, whatever. Even black if you want to represent Natalia and, uh, or her, just her gown. She's been wearing black, that same well, outfit yeah, over and over. Well, pink and black. No, no, no. Trish Stratus, I mean. She's been wearing that black yeah, but fishnet yeah. outfit. Well, that's a different outfit, though. You yeah. can tell by design. Mm-hmm. Ultimately, it would end in, uh, I'm trying to see. Yeah, disqualification. That's right. I'm looking at it like, how did it end? Because I know she didn't tap out. Because during the match, we would have the still considered frenemies and enemies of Becky Lynch and Charlotte Flair not working together as a tag team, actually trying to tag each selves in. And ultimately, Charlotte Flair got enough of it and punt. Well, I would say punch or forearm. Uh, Becky Lynch on the back of the head and then just walked off. Ultimate leaving Natalia to get the sharpshooter in, but Becky Lynch grabs the ropes, not tapping out, and she doesn't break it on the five count by the referee, ultimately ending in disqualification for both Natalia and her partner that night, Trish Stratus. Trish Stratus actually tr- seeing Becky Lynch in distress wants to tell her, Natalia to say, hey, let go, let go, let go. She would shove Trish Stratus and everybody would be like, what? What just happened? Are we seeing another first time match between Natalia and Trish Stratus in the future? That'd be interesting. Well, no, she's telling her to go because she's, uh, because she needs to be 100% at her match. Hmm. Oh, I think that's what started the night. What was it? This? Yeah. WWE honored the effects by the horrific tragedies in El Paso and Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. El Paso and, and Dayton. Yeah. Ohio. Damn. Yeah. Y'all don't know what it is. Just look it up. That, that was just wrong. Those were hate. Those All those people that died were just from hate from what they said. Uh, El Paso, Texas was El, mostly El, Hispanics. El Paso. El Paso was mostly Hispanics. <sighs> Moving along. Give him. Okay. We would have a match between Andrea and Rey Mysterio. Ultimately, Rey Mysterio uh, lost that match to Andrade. I said it wrong before. That sucks. 
We would have a... <laughs> what the fuck is it called? Oh, what the... O-B-G-Y-N appointment. What the fuck is that called? She's getting checked for the baby, I guess. And he pins her. Mike Canellis pins his wife to become the new two-time 24-7 champion. He manned up and took it from her. But then we would see freaking R-Truth and Carmella waiting... There it is. <laughs> he be dressed up like a woman and he, by a, as a woman, and Carmella's dressed up like a man again, saying, "Y'all about to have a baby, but I want my baby." He goes and pops a fake baby right from under his stomach, making it look like he pregnant. <laughs> he pops it. And he's like, "What the hell?" And he goes and pins him with the assist of Carmella, and becomes a eleven time. 27, uh, 24 7 champion, our truth. <laughs> Here we go again. But you know who would probably be scared for him if he, if, if, if Braun Strowman was, uh, going after him. Uh huh. Next, we have Brock Lesnar and Paul Heyman talking about spoilers at SummerSlam after the horrific assault of Brock Lesnar to Seth Rollins twice in one night. It would be Seth Rollins who actually, right after he, uh, Paul Heyman says he has, he doesn't have, he has more balls than brains to have Seth Rollins actually come up to the stage with a chair in hand, dragging himself and ultimately to get brutally assaulted again by Brock Lesnar, F5 in the middle of the ring and ultimately what appeared to say that he wasn't going to be able to make it, he says that he's still going to be there some way, somehow, at Summon of Slam, and he's going to win. So, how that's going to happen, I don't know. People are, wondering, people are asking, will Seth Rollins be 100% at Summer Slam? I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Next, we have Viking Raiders fighting local talent once again, and they win easily. Seriously, the OCs need to, uh, of Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows need to fight the Viking Raiders. Seriously, put them up to the test. They'll take it. Okay, before that, I saw that here. We would have a moment where Kurt Angle is announced in his hometown as a special guest referee between the match of Finn Balor And who else? Ricochet? Ultimately is interrupted. No. Yeah, we would have the Street Profits chatting it up with Kurt Angle to have some heavy milk. Mm -hmm. Heavy milk. <laughs> it's like, my, my wife doesn't want me to get hyped. Kurt Angle is uh, this and that, and they're go, uh, actually getting Kurt Angle to do it. And they got, right when they're doing the toast, you hear air, Drew McIntyre just looking at it and bragging about putting Kurt Angle down in a match between him and uh, Drew McIntyre and making him tap out with his own ankle lock again. You wouldn't be saying Kurt Angle is his younger brother, Brian. In that match, though, between, uh, I think, Ricochet and Finn Balor, does not say. Oh, no, it would be between Cedric Alexander and Drew McIntyre. Ultimately interrupted by the lights going out and the fiend, Bray Wyatt, would come and assault Kurt Angle in his hometown with the Mandible Claw. How you pronounce it? Mandible Claw? Mandible Claw. Another victim added to the fiend's list. Here we go. This is what I was saying. We would then have United States champion and... Raw Tag Team Champions, the OC, fight off against Ricochet and two members, Xavier Woods and Big E, a, a tag team, a six-man tag team match. I'm trying to get this all in my head right. 
And ultimately, it would be the OCs that got the win and the momentum going to SummerSlam. This Sunday. Also, on Saturday, it's NXT TakeOver. We're doing a run-through right now, so probably we're going to cover, uh, with me and my friends, who I'll mention in just a bit, we'll cover 205 Live and NXT, and as well as uh, Impact Wrestling 1 and 2 for the last, this week and last week. Finally, we'll also probably cover NXT TakeOver Toronto when, when it comes out. We have an incident where Samoa Joe, at the beginning of the show, that's what happened. That's what happened after they were honoring the dead, uh, the people who died. You would have Samoa Joe interrupt the new freaking opening theme to Monday Night Raw. And Samoa Joe interrupts being accused of the one to attack Roman Reigns on SmackDown. He would be ram bombarded by comments and even a poll would be open to the public to suggest who they think was the one to attack Roman Reigns. And Samoa Joe's name was on the top of the list. Even Drew McIntyre was on that list. And he I saw on Google uh, News that he made a statement saying it wasn't him. Ultimately, though, Samoa Joe would wait after... The show, uh, middle of the show saying that he's gonna, uh, can't, um, he's gonna, uh, uh, tell the, the, his side of the story. Okay. No, 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 someone else. Shut down the show of Monday Night Raw if he doesn't get an apology from Roman Reigns. So he goes out to the back where Roman Reigns comes in and ultimately a fight is about to break out between them. Before, unexpectedly, Roman Reigns jumps in the freaking car, back into the car, and Samoa Joe is taking a step back by a car that comes, <laughs> sideswiping him from behind. You could have said, uh, put Raw hostage. Huh? You could have said he's worth No, him. that's what he said. He took Raw, uh, he took Raw hostage. Yeah, that's right. that's but that's what he said. He's going to be shut down. That means it closed down the show. Mm-hmm. In which case, during the commercial break, we would have a look of Samoa Joe wondering who the hell is in the car with the tinted windows. We couldn't tell. Ultimately, Samoa Joe, in that instant, opens and even goes so far to break the door open to give uh, Roman Reigns some air. Later, we Triple H check on him, and uh, Samoa Joe, in the back, would state that he it proved that it wasn't him. That we know of. So we don't know who it is, but we're going to find out hopefully but this summer. Here's, here's the thing. They're, they, they're probably doing the same thing like they did in back in the Attitude Era. When Stone, because that had the same thing happened with Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, who ran him over. And uh, True Edge telling the world that uh, he didn't do it, but real life, he did hire someone to do that. It was Rikishi. So they're probably doing the same thing. Like someone Joe hired someone to ran over Roman Reigns. Mm-hmm. And it could be and some people believe that's Buddy Murphy. Next, from tr- another freakish incident to a celebration. Woohoo! Ladies and gentlemen, we would have a fatal four way tag team women's title match, tag team match on the line with the Iconics, Fire and Desire with Mandy Rose and Sonya Deville, the Kabuki Warriors of Asuka and Kyrie Zane, and Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross. Ultimately, I gotta give it to your girl and Xavier Hill's girl, Mandy Rose, for eliminating the ta- the tag team champions, the women's tag team champions, the Iconics. They were whining and crying during the commercial break. I didn't see it until just now before this video was recorded. Oh man. Thank you, Mandy Rose. Uh, you're not one of my favorites, but thank you for doing that solid. Getting rid of these girls. What did you say? You're still my girl. Because <laughs> you kind of like Trish Stratus. <laughs> Ultimately, though, after that, it would be uh, the Kabuki Warriors that make Mandy Rose tap out by Oscar Locke. And Mandy Rose taps out with uh, no assist because Carrie Sane had Sonya Deville taken care of while Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross were waiting outside for their opportunity. 
coming down to between them. It would be ultimately Alexa Bliss and Nikki Cross winning and becoming your third ever WWE Women's Tag Team Champion. But even before that, they almost had it with um, Alexa, uh, not Alexa, Alexa Bliss countering Oscar Lock and almost getting the pin on Oscar. But still, later on, thanks to the assists and the amazing teamwork between the two, good God, the Kabuki Warriors, I look forward to when they become champions because they deserve it with their all, all over the place tag team moves. Good God. I was like, they're, they're all over the place. Hit here, hit there, right there, hit there, right there, right there, slam here, kick there. What the hell? What, what's going on? This is crazy. I love these two. But they didn't get to win because the tag team at the last minute between Asuka and Nikki Cross's unique styles matched perfectly in sync to get them the win. The Goddess and the Twisted Sister are your new tag team women champions. Ultimately. And they are celebrating. Finally, we would have the Miz TV special with Shawn Michaels and Dolph Ziggler. Ultimately, their contract would be signed, but apparently it would be The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler next Monday Night Raw. And it ain't gonna be Shawn Michaels versus Dolph Ziggler at SummerSlam. It ain't gonna be The Miz versus Dolph Ziggler either. That's what he said. That's what I just said. Uh, It would be. Shawn Michaels. It wouldn't be that either. Because that's what they thought. uh, That's what everybody was thinking. But people already figured it out. You could hear it. Everybody was screaming it. And sure enough, you wanna say it? It was Goldberg. And people are saying, I hope this match, I hope he does better this time. Mm-hmm. He did good against Brock Lesnar, and he did good when he fought against Kevin Owens, so. He, he, well, he didn't he, do so good against Iron Yeah. That, that, there was something going wrong. I pointed that out with y'all. Something was going on. He was already bleeding before the match. And plus that, like, Undertaker couldn't, uh, hardly stand up, and Goldberg was getting weak. Yeah, and he said that he said he had a terrible match with that. So I don't know how this is going to end for Goldberg, but this is supposed to be his last SummerSlam, from what they're saying. He probably do like a fifteen minute match, like like he did with Brock and Kevin Owens. Yeah, It'll probably fifteen minutes. Dolph Ziggler is furious though. He is not happy that the, he, he's getting this opportunity like this. All right, go ahead and look up SmackDown on August sixth. It'd probably be easy. With uh, the Miz or Sean, even Sean didn't want to fight. Well, of course he didn't want to fight. He just he's, like he said he. It ain't me. Him. Oh, fun fact: he's still rocking his boy Triple H's NXT gear. Yeah, he's he's a coach. <laughs> he been a coach. I didn't know that. He been a coach for four years, for four years. I didn't know that. Yeah. In which case, now while he's looking that up, give a shout out to our boys who I hope to see this Sunday. Early on in the show to do a podcast between Impact, NXT, and uh, 205 Live and NXT TakeOver Toronto. We have Xavier Hill, Mike Henry, and Andre Mitchell. A link to their YouTube pages will be in the descriptions down below as always. And another shout out to Renee, Farrow, Chris Petrie, and Delvin. Let's see. Oh, just so y'all know, The Rock was at NXT. <laughs> no, I hope to see that tomorrow. He was at backstage. We would open SmackDown Live with the King's Court with Jerry the King Lawler and a special guest, Trish Stratus, making another night appear- a day appearance or night. Make, mm-hmm. another, make another appearance. Mm-hmm. After uh, Ra- Monday Night Raw. It would ultimately be interrupted by Charlotte Flair saying, why is there no queen in the king's court? Words would be thrown left and right saying, paid the way or doing better than what they did back then. But ultimately, ultimately, it would be Trish Stratus saying, in order to beat a woman, you gotta beat the woman. This match is going to be classic. Classic. This is going to be a classic. 
Next, we would have Dolph Ziggler versus Ali. On account that the match was supposed to be against Rey Mysterio, and he would ultimately come in with the intro of Goldberg. We thought Goldberg made an appearance on SmackDown. Nope, it's just Dolph Ziggler acting like Goldberg. And you know what he's doing? To, uh, he sent a message to if that match there. Uh-huh. He sent a message to Goldberg. Yeah, he's trying to get in his head, playing those mind games, as the commentator uh, said. He's saying this is you. He's saying this is you, Goldberg. What I'm gonna do to you at SummerSlam? Yeah, the match didn't even start. The match, the bell didn't ring. He just assaulted Rey Mysterio and laid him out. Mustafa Ali eventually comes out after. Dolph Ziggler makes his speech saying that he is going to take out these legends and ha- take the show for himself and do what he always does. Well, Ali comes in and uh, just jumps in the mat- uh, ring and it's made official. Ultimately, Dolph Ziggler defeats Ali. Damn. Guy who's talking about being a hero and Ali didn't get the win. That sucks. Well, you can't. Go- He's a cruiserweight. You can't. He ain't no- in uh, Dolph Ziggler's lead, uh, yeah. league. Next, we have an interview with Roman Reigns giving him exclusive regarding his recent brushes with disaster. And I'm going to skip this part uh, for a second. Ultimately, he would then go into the locker room because apparently he would hear that one individual was there during both incidents. Particularly the incident at SmackDown Live when all the equipment fell on Roman Reigns. He would walk up to him and forcibly get certain information on him. And it would be mentioned at the end of the night. Well, I think it was at the end of the night. Yeah, I think it was. During the match with him involved, which we'll come to in just a bit. It would be Buddy Murphy interrogated and assaulted by Roman Reigns to get whatever information he could get out of him. And he said it was Harper. No, wait, uh, Luke. Harper. And Rowan. Red Rowan. Sorry, I got the name mixed up. I got the names mixed up. They were always together at the time, so I got the names mixed up. Rowan was name mentioned. He said, Daniel Bryan and Eric uh, Eric Rowan. Ah, I just saw Rowan. And we would see Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan after their tag team match. And we see Rowan standing there. And if you notice, Daniel Bryan was mentioned, uh, uh, he was interviewed about that. Uh, He was saying uh, that Eric Rowan did not do this. He was with me all the time. We then have a match between Natalya and Ember Moon. Battle to a double count out. Damn. I'll go with Natalia because she's a veteran. I go with my girl Amber Moon. We then have the Kevin Owens show, Babyface, with Shane McMahon. I know he's not. Not my favorite. I think that show is terrible. Well, then we have Shane McMahon ultimately stating the obvious: should Kevin Owens lose in any form of way by pin submission? counter or disqualification he be gone Kevin Owens ultimately puts him on the spot because fan after fan after fan after fan comment after comment after comment saying if he's putting his career on the line why shouldn't Shane Shane does not bite and say that he's putting his career on the line after which Shane McMahon assaults Kevin Owens and topples the Commentator's announce table over Kevin Owens, which is a symbol that he can do in that match to get the count out he needs. That sucks. Also, in that match, I mean, in that, uh, uh, what do you call it, a promo? In that talk show, the Kevin Owens show, he would be jumped two on one by Elias. Elias would be dealt with, but Shane McMahon did what he did to get the win, to get the up on him. Next, we would have Sami Zayn come into the ring stating what he is going to do to Aleister Black and how Aleister Black is hiding away in the dark corner because he knows this and that, saying that, you know, 
what cowards would say. As the Blacks throws the book at him and says that their match isn't going to be at SummerSlam. It's going to be tonight, right now. A match between Aleister Black and Sami Zayn commences and Aleister Black kicks freaking Sami Zayn upside the head. Ultimately, the move being called Fade to Black. And Aleister Black wins. <laughs> well, something Benjamin sent him uh, Sonny Benjamin is being asked, will he participate and try to become the 24-7 title? And he's like, mm. Mm. What the heck? You know how many years has he been a champion that day? Nine, like ten years. Next on SmackDown Live, we've been having Big E and Xavier Woods defending the... Uh, oh, oh, not defending. That's the word. Defeating Daniel Bryan and Eric Rowan. By Viva Disqualification, since Eric Rowan assaulted both Xavier Woods and Big E to the point where, yeah, they assaulted with him a chair. Ultimately, disqualification. I'm correct. That's when the part where we see Roman Reigns assaulting Buddy Murphy and Brody Murphy mentions Rowan, uh, Rowan's name. So, I would end the show. Oh, we also have a warning from Bray Wyatt to Finn Balor during the Firefly Fun Show. There's also a talk about, a little promo talking about uh, Kofi Kingston beating Randy Orton and Randy Orton beating Kofi Kingston. Talking about their past. Ten years ago. Oh, yeah. When Kofi Kingston was rocking that, uh, the whole, those, uh, well, black and uh, green, uh, green and yellow get up. Mm, mm, mm. With that said, ladies and gentlemen, that will be it for our show. He's uh, that, uh, we'll wait till this Sunday to do the uh, three other shows, and of course, if we have the time, do a pre-show of the summer uh, SummerSlam, or we just do the after show. If we have the time, we have the time. If we don't, we don't. We're going to probably do three podcasts before SummerSlam anyway, so if we have time to do the pre-show and our predictions or hopes on who will win, we'll do that. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, give it a thumbs down. Hit that subscribe button right there, that red button, big red button. If you like the content, and hit that notification bell and put it on ring so you get the notifications for the next Heavy Monsters podcast this Sunday at SummerSlam. I'm Serge Dragon. This is... Hey, buddy, and we'll see you next time. Bye.